Hey, welcome back, I'm Lai. This channel has, for the longest time, been a champion of innovation, spreading the message of companies that possess great technology and hence deserve more attention. SpaceX and Tesla are among the most frequently mentioned companies on this channel because I personally find them very inspiring and most importantly, they're making technology and science fashionable again. That's amazing. However, in the past month, I've given Tesla too little attention. So today, let's revisit Tesla as a company. When I talk about companies, I like to talk about their core capabilities, meaning what it has that other companies don't. Therefore, when it comes to Tesla, I have a four plus one approach, four core advantages and one disadvantage. The four core capabilities Tesla has over its competitors are its strength in the EV market, its pioneering effort in the lithium-ion battery market, its dominance in the solar energy market, as well as its continued improvements in the autonomous driving market. Therefore, I don't care what financial experts say, as long as Tesla still has an edge over its competitors in one or more of these core capabilities, I think the future for Tesla is bright. So let's take a look at what happened in these categories in the last six months. First of all, the automobile industry has seen continued shifts towards electrification in the past six months. We're seeing commitment from both sides of the aisle, the manufacturers as well as the regulators. Most major OEMs have announced commitment to making more electric vehicles. As you can see, BMW, Honda, Mercedes, Nissan, and Volkswagen even announced their commitment in percentages of electric sales in the next decade. On the side of regulators, many countries have also announced sales ban of internal combustion engine vehicles. This will slowly guide the market towards a more environmental-friendly battery-driven auto market. On top of this, nations around the world have also implemented measures to encourage EV charging infrastructure as seen in this graph. Therefore, it's almost certain that we will see large-scale shifts towards EV in the next decade, and Tesla will be uniquely positioned to lead the industry in my opinion. It is true that Tesla is tiny compared to GM, Ford, Volkswagen, and Toyota in terms of total auto sales, but Tesla is the leader in the EV market by all existing statistics, and this is how small companies disrupt big industries, identify the industry shift, double down on future technology so that when the shift is complete, a new industry order is formed. This is why Tesla stock overtook that of GM while it has only half a million total sales. Furthermore, in the EV market, Tesla has a substantial lead in terms of total sales according to EVobsession.com. Its Model 3 tops the list, followed by Model S and Model X. So as long as the pie of the EV market is getting bigger, Tesla is in good hands. Secondly, let's talk about batteries. Just to give you guys a little bit of a context, lithium ion batteries have always been the costliest part of EV productions. It's also the hardest part because this is a new industry that no one has tapped into before. In 2010, when Tesla started producing its first generation Tesla Roadster, its battery was $1,000 per kilowatt hour, which means for a 60 kilowatt hour battery, it would cost $60,000. Really simple math, everyone can understand. Fast forward to 2017, a 60 kilowatt hour Tesla Model 3 is sold at $35,000. This would be impossible seven years ago. Really simple math again, $35,000 wouldn't even cover the battery cost in 2010, let alone building the battery into a car. But the cost of battery has dropped to $180 per kilowatt hour. This made Tesla Model 3 possible. Furthermore, Elon recently made headlines as he hinted that Tesla will soon be able to make batteries at $100 per kilowatt hour. His original statement is this. We think at the cell level probably we can do better than $100 per kilowatt hour, maybe later this year, depending upon commodity prices. With further improvements to the cell chemistry, the production process, and more vertical integration on the cell side, for example, integrating the production of cathode and anode materials in the Gigafactory and improved design of the module and pack, we think long term we can get below $100 per kilowatt hour at the pack level which is really the key figure of merit for a car, a long term meaning definitely less than two years. 
two distinctions I would like to point out. The first one is that this capability is unique to Tesla because of its economies of scales at Gigafactory. Economies of scales is an easy economic concept to understand. It basically means when you produce in bulk, you can get more specialized and more efficient, pay less for raw materials and thus making things at a cheaper price. This is what Gigafactory is designed to do. From the information I'm getting, Tesla has a lead in terms of battery production. The second distinction I want to make is that at $100 per kilowatt hour, Tesla has few competitors. Only LG Chemicals and Samsung SDI can make batteries at competitive price. On the energy front, Tesla Energy, aka Solar City, is also making strides. Building solar facilities in Australia is its latest stunt. Tesla Energy will also be affected by the booming battery industry. As the batteries become cheaper over the years, Tesla Energy will improve its competitiveness as well. Lastly, I want to talk about autonomous driving. As you guys know, I have a bit of a reservation for autopilot. Tesla is doing well in battery, electric vehicles and energy, but it seems to me that its autonomous driving technology is currently strapped on the backseat as Tesla focuses its effort on fixing its production bottlenecks. According to a research done by Navigant, Tesla is lagging behind traditional automakers in terms of autonomous driving, while GM and Waymo leads this industry. There have also been a number of car crashes recently involving Tesla vehicles using autopilot, three of which resulted in fatalities. Federal investigators recently issued a preliminary report on one fatal crash in Mountain View, California, in which autopilot was reported to have made a navigational mistake contributing to the incident. However, on the upside, Elon has said recently that Tesla is going to roll out its full autonomous driving features in August, so I'll take his word for it, but I remain skeptical of Tesla's overall capability in autonomous driving in light of its growing competitions from Waymo and General Motors. Lastly, let's talk about Tesla's production bottlenecks. After months of headache, Tesla is seeing some concrete improvements in its production rates. Elon's tweets indicated that Tesla is now able to produce 3,500 cars within a week's time and it's well on its way to achieve 5,000 cars per week milestone end of quarter two 2018. Putting things into perspective, in August 2017, Tesla is only able to make 440 Model 3s per month. Therefore, 3,500 Model 3s per week is not a bad improvement at all. Considering all four plus one factors, there is a plus for four categories and a question mark for one category. So my overall assessment of Tesla still is and has always been optimism. Tesla is making tremendous progress on many fronts, especially on the area of production bottlenecks, considering Tesla's strategic position at the very center of a huge industry shift, I see no reason for Tesla not to succeed in the years to come. However, recently I made a video talking about Tesla's unresolved battery production problems, and as a result, some of you guys called me out. Some of you guys called me out and claimed that I did not do enough research on Tesla. And to those people, I want to say, well, I love Tesla, and I made 18 videos on this channel on Tesla. In fact, my very first video on this channel, some of you guys might still remember it, is called How Tesla is Changing Our World. And I made it into a full part series that goes on for over 30 minutes. So don't tell me that I don't support Tesla because I do. But I think we ought to be able to talk about something critically precisely because we love them. I have nothing to gain. Uh, by telling you guys that Tesla is not doing well in certain aspects, uh, be it uh, battery production or autonomous driving. In fact, I know that I've lost subscribers because of that, but you know, I would consider myself doing a very poor job if I started doing that, because what's the value of this channel in that, right? Uh, lucky for me, most of you guys understand my perspective and appreciate me talking critically about a company that we all love. That's amazing. So thank you all so much for your overwhelming support and insightful comments, which I'm sure I'll see more of in the comment down below today. All right, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I'm Lei. I'll talk to you guys later.